So as we all know, every year or twice a year, many countries hold military expos where they showcase their newest technology and upgrades, modernizations, gadgets, and basically new products to sell on the market, either for their domestic military markets or abroad. And the last couple of years was no different, with incredible new modernization projects coming from many places in Europe, including Ukraine and Russia. The largest expo for Russia, for example, this year, and usually every year, was the Army 2017 Expo. But Ukroboronprom also unveiled new technology and hold their own expos. We'll talk about different technologies and modernizations released in other videos, but in this video I specifically want to focus on the new modernized Ukrainian armor that Ukroboronprom is very proud of. This new vehicle I'm talking about is called the BMP-1 UMD, a significant upgrade of the Soviet-era BMP-2 vehicle. Besides the engine, almost everything is Ukrainian made about this vehicle, which is fantastic for Ukraine, but also ironic considering that Ukraine is known to produce reliable engines since the Soviet era. The vehicle first debuted in October 2016, but now, as they are calling it, officially rolling out since November 27th of 2017 with all factory tests complete. The engine is a German 330 horsepower super turbocharged power pack with an electronic control unit produced by the company Dutz. The name of the engine is the TCD 2013 L64V engine and Ukroboron Prom claims that it has improved reliability and efficiency, longer lifespan and is quieter while producing greater endurance. The engine can be overheated up to 390 horsepower as claimed. The previous Russian UTD-20 engine had 300 maximum horsepower. Both of them are six-cylinder, four-stroke engines, but the Soviet-era engine was a direct injection diesel engine, whereas the German replacement is turbo supercharged engine. So let's talk about the fun parts now. This new BMP-1 UMD, which weighs 14 tons, has entire new Ukrainian-made firepower, an updated 2A42 30mm automatic cannon called ZTM-2, an AGS-17 30mm grenade launcher, a new 7.62mm machine gun, and two anti-tank guided missile launchers called Barrier, mounted on the right side of the turret. All of this can work simultaneously via the new Ukrainian Stilet Combat Module, which also enhances the overall firepower of the vehicle and most importantly gives the ability of an unmanned turret. That's right ladies and gentlemen, unmanned turret. Information about the Stilet Combat Module, not to be confused with Stiletto, is very hard to come by. What is claimed, however, is that since the entire system is autonomous, it can automatically detect and track targets, much like the Russian T-15 Armada and Kurganets 25B BMPs. Information about their autonomous IFF software, identification friend or foe, is currently unknown to the public at this point, if any exists at all. The layout of the vehicle on the interior more closely resembles a standard Soviet-era BMP-2 instead of BMP-1, where the driver sits on the left side of the front of the vehicle and the commander sits behind the driver. In Ukroboronprom's press report, they claim that with Stilet, as well as the new Trek m targeting system, this new modernized beast is capable of attacking the usual light-armored vehicles but is also capable of attacking heavily armored tanks with a range distance of up to 5 kilometers, which for an old school BMP is very impressive. It also features a brand new weapon stabilizer system, which Ukraine calls the SVU500ZC weapon stabilizer. Aside from that, Stealth was also focused on this vehicle. The designers of this vehicle claim that they considerably worked on disguising the new BMP from thermal imaging, making it less detectable by such cameras, 
as well as other several auxiliary protective elements installed on the vehicle. Now, it's very important to state that these modernizations aren't done in order to compete with newer generation vehicles such as the BMD4 or even the BMP3, which already have similar if not better firepower capabilities. That debate is for a different video. The purpose of these modernization programs is that old-school, Soviet-era vehicles were mass-produced and are still available in huge working numbers, but are very ineffective on the modern battlefield. This is a stop-gap measure, so that working units of armor won't have to be thrown away and will still produce satisfactory results on the battlefield before a newer generation model is designed or released which Ukraine is definitely working on and developing. These modernizations and upgrades, once designed and tested, are actually very cheap to mass produce and mass upgrade. For example, Russia in 2016 upgraded 150 Soviet-era T-72B tanks to the T-72B3M standard, or as others call it, the T-72B4, for only $37 million. Even in my opinion, that is a well worth upgrade package, since that makes an old Soviet vehicle into a T-90 standard, with even newer features that a T-90A doesn't even have, such as an electronic panoramic scope. Over the last couple of years, Russia and Ukraine have unveiled and showcased, some already even put into service, these modernizations of old Soviet-era vehicles cheap and effective. Other examples include the Ukrainian T-64B-1M tank, which just as the BMP-1 UMD puts modern armor on the vehicle which increase the crew's survivability chances. I will make a separate video showing Russia's upgraded armor of 2017 which is interesting as well. So while these vehicles don't produce groundbreaking breakthrough technologies, they do introduce equivalent features of newer generation vehicles or even features that later inspire to be further developed into a new generation vehicle. The current status of the BMP-1 UMD is in the Ukrainian army and military testing, and if it passes, will be purchased by the Ukrainian military. Even if not passed by the government, Oligarchs and other rich organizations can make their own orders for the units that are under their funding, such as Azov Regiment or Right Sector. This was the case with the T-64B1M tank that was seen by such regiments before the standard Ukrainian army. The vehicle is produced in western Ukraine in the Zhytomyr Armor Plant, which recently in 2015 took over all orders of Ukrainian armor from the Eastern Ukrainian Kharkov Morozov Design Bureau and Malyshev Factory due to being based in Kharkov in Eastern Ukraine in fear of separatist sabotage or rebellion by the workers. Basically, there's more loyalty in Zhytomyr armor plant than in Malyshev Factory as seen by the Ukrainian government's perspective. But, I must say, if all of these claims of the vehicle's capabilities are true, the autonomous tracking, the unmanned turret, which I have no reason to believe that it's false information, then I have great respect for Ukraine's engineering and production capabilities. A country that is in war, a corrupt economy, and a malfunctioning government, and yet they still roll out with technology that is on par with Russia's and the West's technology. Many Soviets I interviewed say that it's because the factory workers and designers still have the Soviet mentality of pushing forward with limited resources. And most newer generation Ukrainians I interview say it's because of the unity of the people of facing off a threat, much like the Soviets did in the early 40s in the Eastern Front of World War II, of people coming together of a common cause. Regardless of the reason for their success, under their current conditions, it is very impressive for these factories and design bureaus to accomplish such feats and Ukraine war awareness gives them respect.